Today is, uh, okay, good afternoon. Today is uh, Fridays with Feldman, and uh, we're back with a topic, a, uh, a subspecialty topic. And today's topic is actually a, I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to talk about something in MHE, which is called multiple hereditary exostosis, which is a condition, a, a genetic condition, in which children and adults suffer from multiple osteochondromas, multiple soft tissues, multiple bony tumors, um, which are most often benign, that can cause uh, different types of difficulties. But today I'm going to focus on one specific topic, which is the forearm in this condition. And the reason I'm going to do that is I'm going to give a bit of a scientific conversation about it, is because we're trying to change the way people, surgeons, physicians, clinicians, patients, look at themselves and look at the way we treat this, this problem. This how, how do we treat forearms and elbows in children or adults with multiple hereditary exostosis. So the background is MHE uh, causes many limb deformities um, by the growth of these osteochondromas. Deformities can result in short stature, nerve compression, uh, limb deformities, and discrepancies in length. Um, but more than 80% of patients with MHE have some type of problem in their upper extremities. And 20 to 30% of those patients actually have elbow dislocations or radial head dislocations. And a radial head is a portion of your elbow. It's part of your elbow. And what it looks like is this. So you can see a child, this is a child, who basically, this is the radial head which belongs in the joint here. I'll switch this around. Here's the radial head. It belongs in the joint there. And you can see it's sticking out in his arm over here. But we really need to prevent this. And that's why I'm going to give this talk more as a scientific talk than I usually do, which is a layman's talk about a topic. So this is what topic we're going to talk about, which is the forearm, which, caused, which is an osteochondroma here between the radius and the ulna. This is the radius dislocated, the ulna is bent, and this is the forearm, which is made up of two bones, and you can see the problems that it caused in this child above. So we have looked at, we looked at 73 uh, forearms in 43 of our patients consecutively treated, and we analyzed what caused the problem. Why did the radial head dislocate? Is it because the ulna is too short, which is one of the bones? Is it because maybe the radius is bowed? Is it the ulna is bowed? So what exactly is causing the problem? And we looked at this as about 26 males and 17 females, and 17 of these kids had either a dislocation or a partial dislocation, a subluxation of their radial head. And we compared these two groups, and this is how we do it, with logistic regression. But this, this chart, even for, for people who are lay people, you can see how if you don't dislocate, that there's a certain number, that you're, you have a certain angle of your ulna. And if you do dislocate, your ulna is a certain amount angular. So what we showed is that if your ulna starts bowing, that you then will dislocate your elbow. Well, why let the ulna bow? And this we proved through what's called regression analysis, which showed the fact that basically if your ulna is too bowed, or if it's too short, or the combination of the two, your radial head will dislocate, the elbow will dislocate, and we can prevent this. So in doing this, we came up with a classification of this topic. So people with MHE can have a normal forearm. They can just have a type 1, which means they can have some osteochondromas between the two bones, which can be taken out, but no real bow. They can have a short ulna. They can have a short ulna with a bowed ulna, which causes subluxation of the radial head, or the radial head could be just dislocated out. An uncommon finding is when the ulna, the small bone, grows too long and hurts at the wrist. Sometimes what happens also is the wrist becomes slack. It leans out. It falls out. And that's because this joint starts rotating out. But the reason why this is important is because all these things can be prevented, and all of this can be treated. So, for instance, Here's an example of a patient who has a bowed ulna. Right, this is the ulna, the small bone, it's bowed, it's short, and the radial head is popping out, it's starting to come out. And so in that case, you can do a pretty small operation, just straighten the ulna, and the radial head pops back in. Without doing anything else, it just goes back in. And that's really what happens. So you can treat this and not let it become a big deformity or a big problem for the child, even for the adult. Sometimes you could actually lengthen it. Here's one case where you could see it's coming out, and you can actually lengthen the ulna to match the radius. You, don't, you may not even have to do that lengthening. 
And if the wrist starts slipping, like in this case over here, you can see the wrist starting to slip. In that case, you basically can fix it by straightening the slip. And you can actually straighten the radial bone and the wrist no longer slips. Now what do you do if the radial head is dislocated? That's more complicated, because we, but the, the goal of my talk is not is to tell people you shouldn't let your elbow dislocate. Your elbow can remain within the joint. It doesn't have to dislocate. It can be treated as in a young child, just keeping the ulna straight, taking the, the, the osteochondromas between the radius and the ulna out, so the radius and the ulna can move well together. And you don't have to go to some very big procedure where we try to put the radial head back in the joint. And then it never works as well. It can look better and function better like in this child who had this operation. He had his radius straightened. And he had his ulna lengthened and, and his radius put back in the joint. But that's not the goal. The goal is to treat this before it happens. So what we found is that in that bone, in that bone called the ulna, which is the bone which makes up your elbow joint and your wrist joint, if it's bowed and it's short, that's a high risk for dislocation and it, can be, it should be straightened surgically. So I, re I recommend for patients and surgeons to treat this early and not late. If you, if you don't have ulnar bowing, the radial head does not come out. And when the, when the radial ulna is bowed, the shorter the ulna, the sooner it will come out. So I think if we know these facts, we can keep patients with MHEs, forearms moving, elbows moving well, and don't have to have chronic pain as they get older. So that's my message for today. It's a short message about MHE forearms, about keeping them moving, and preventing dislocations of the elbow. Uh, I want to thank you, and uh, happy Thanksgiving to all, and happy holidays if I don't see you before then. Take care. And obviously, if you have any questions, we'll hang out for a few minutes and uh, wait for any questions you want to type in. And if not, you can certainly email us um, on our website, and we'd be happy to take questions, and I'd be happy to respond when I get the chance. Otherwise, but feel free to answer, ask any questions if you're listening right now, and I will take, uh, and I'll try to respond to them as we speak. So somebody asked a question, why, how do we know if our ulna is bowed? That's a good question. So basically, most kids who have MHE should be serially x-rayed, having their forearms x-rayed. So every year or so, or two years, they have their arm. An osteochondroma, a bony tumor between the two bones that should come out and prevent, and, and prevent dislocation and also allow good motion. And there's one, there's one other question that was asked is, well, yeah, what about if the forearm is short? So the, what do we do then? So the forearm is usually short only if you allow it, the radial head to come out. Otherwise, the, 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 the forearm is usually of appropriate length. So usually it's, it's, it's a discrepancy between two bones that can become a problem. But if the form is very short, it can be lengthened, but that is a much more rare event, and what we really need to do is to prevent the dislocation, which will keep the forearm long enough and keep the forearm moving. So if there are no other questions, we'll leave it at that and wish you a great weekend, and again, a happy Thanksgiving.